In this video, I will show you how to upgrade your Ender 3 with Marlin firmware and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing and if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. This video is to answer the question, what is your firmware doing on your Ender 3 and why would you want to upgrade it to Marlin firmware? Then I'm showing you how to install the firmware and finally we are doing some troubleshooting tips for some of the common issues that you will run into. Now the firmware is the operating system of your printer. It takes care to set the right temperature of bed and nozzle and controls the movement of the motors. The firmware reads the G-code files from the SD card and interprets the G-codes into movements of the motors which will lead to something being printed which is what we want in the end. It also makes sure the right information is displayed on the LCD screen and takes commands from this turnable knob so you are able to control what the printer is doing. Now why another firmware? The reason is mainly printer manufacturers release these devices at one point in time and normally don't invest much afterwards in upgrading the software, just like most phone manufacturers do, with some exceptions, of course. Sometimes you will get a new firmware version from the manufacturer, but let's be honest, device manufacturers don't earn money from adding new features to the firmware. They earn money from selling new printers. So you can see there is little to no motivation from their side to invest in getting you the latest and greatest software with a one or two years old model. But we can overcome this issue. There is a huge community around an open source 3D printer firmware called the Marlin firmware that works with almost every 3D printer on the market. This is what we are going to install today on the Ender 3. The Marlin firmware improves your printer in several aspects. For example, it adds thermal runaway protection, which will detect unusual temperature changes with your hot end or heat bed, and it will shut down your printer to prevent fire. Another feature is bed leveling, either mesh bed levering or auto bed levering. So you see there is reasons to upgrade your firmware and the best is it's free and continuously being improved by an open source community. Now let's clarify what additional parts we are going to need to flash a new firmware to the end of free. You need a USB cable with a mini USB connector. It's unfortunately not a micro USB cable like for most common smartphones, but a little older kind of standard. A programmer device, either the USB Tiny ISP or the USB ASP, I'll explain that in a moment. A 10 pin flat cable to connect the programmer device to the printer. And a 10 to 6 pin programmer adapter. This is really essential to make the programmer work with the Ender 3. With the USB Tiny ISP, you might get this additional 6 pin cable but it just doesn't fit the connector on the board because it interferes with the display cable connector. So it's just too broad. I have put links to all the cables and parts needed in the description down below. So let's start with the most commonly mentioned approach to flash firmware to a 3D printer, which is using a USB cable. Let's clarify some of the background about this method first. Using the USB cable to flash firmware requires a piece of software being installed on your printer that's called the bootloader. This little piece of software can be activated to accept a new firmware file from the USB port and write that to the printer flash memory. The catch is however, the Ender 3 does never come with a bootloader installed and so you have no option for USB flashing in the beginning, but we can fix that. The second method that can be used to install a firmware is to flash it directly to the printer's memory using an external programmer device that is not depending on a bootloader. These programmers are connected directly to the so-called ICP port on the mainboard, the in-circuit programmer port. That is the method which is usually used by printer manufacturers. Both methods are totally valid, but the bootloader method is a bit easier. It's a more convenient way for testing new firmware because you can just plug in the USB cable and upload a new firmware version. Otherwise, for the programmer method, you have to open the electronics case of the Ender 3 to reach the ICP port. Starting with the prerequisites to get everything set up on your computer correctly so you can continue step by step. First, you need to download the Arduino IDE software from the arduino.cc homepage. The latest version used in this video is 1.8.9. Also, I'm always just using the zip version of the IDE 
I'm saying this because using the installer version might cause a little different setup that I'm using. I'm not saying that this is necessarily causing issues, but you know, the devil is sometimes in the detail. Before the next step, launch the Arduino IDE once, so it will create some of the initial folders in your user profile, which we will need in the following step. Next is to install the Arduino drivers, so the Arduino IDE will find your printer once it's connected to the PC. Go to the folder where you unzipped the Arduino IDE and in the driver subfolder, run the dpinst amd64 exe file. Make sure you confirm all questions to install drivers with yes. Now we need to install the board definition for the Ender 3. A board definition tells the Arduino IDE how it needs to talk to the printer's hardware and which processor it can expect to compile the firmware for. I have linked the downloads for the Ender 3 board definition in the description, so get that file and unzip it. Now copy the Zanguino folder from the unzipped board definition file to your documents Arduino hardware folder. If the hardware folder doesn't exist yet, just create it before copying the Sanguino folder into it. Okay, next we need the Marlin firmware and we need to configure it for the Ender 3. There's a website where you can download it, link is in the description. I'm gonna show it to you right here. Go to the page github.com slash Marlin firmware slash Marlin. Here we can download a zip file of the latest version. And by the time this video is made, the latest stable version is 1.1.9 and that's perfectly fine. There is a newer version being developed at the moment, which is going to be 2.0, but it really doesn't add any more value to this printer. So basically the new version is being optimized for new mainboards having 32-bit processors. So once you've downloaded the Marlin firmware as a zip file, unpack that into a folder on your hard disk. Anyway, someone in our Discord channel mentioned it's not a good idea to have anything, the Arduino IDE or the firmware source files in a OneDrive, Dropbox or any kind of cloud synchronized folder. And that totally makes sense to me because these are managed by background processes which do all kinds of file locking and checking. So better keep these files in a place that is maybe just in a temporary folder on your hard disk. Next, you will need to start with a default configuration for the Ender 3 which contains all the necessary changes that will make Marlin work on the Ender 3. You will find these configuration files in the Marlin, example configurations, and then you go to the printer manufacturer, in our case, Creality, and then the Ender 3 folder. Copy all those configuration files to the Marlin subdirectory. Next up is which programming device are you going to use? Let's start with the first option, which is called the USB ASP programmer. It's a tiny USB stick adapter that plugs into your USB port and on the other side it's connected to the cable and then you will need an adapter from 10 pins to 6 pins that plugs into your mainboard. The reason for using the 10 to 6 pin adapter is simply that the ICP port on the mainboard has a different pin layout so you need to use this adapter otherwise you will simply fail uploading any kind of firmware. The package of USB ASP plus the adapter will cost you between 9 and 13 bucks on Amazon. Links are in the description. Now with Windows 10 by default the USB ASP is not recognized correctly so we need to install a special driver to make the USB ASP visible to the Arduino IDE. The easiest way to install the driver is using the Zadig tool. I have put a link to the download page in the description. So start by first plugging in the USB ASP into a USB port of your computer. Then open the Zadig tool. Then select Options List All Devices. From the list of devices, find the entry that is called USB ASP and select it. And then from the list of drivers available, select the WinUSB driver and click on the Replace Driver button. After the installation has completed, you should get a confirmation pop-up. Now finally check that the driver is correctly installed by right-clicking the Windows Start button and selecting the Device Manager. In the Device Manager, there should be a USB ASP's entry in the Universal Serial Bus Devices section. The second option you have as a programmer is the so-called USB Tiny ISP. 
It's technically very similar to the ASP SP, but it has the advantage that it can be used with a USB cable. So it gives you a little more distance from your PC to the printer, which is sometimes more convenient. Otherwise, it's basically just the same. It's also available on Amazon, but it doesn't come with the 10 to 6 pin adapter by default, which you will need to purchase separately. I've also put links for both in the description down below. To install the drivers for the USB Tiny ISP, go to the link in the description, which takes you to the Adafruit driver download page. Install the driver software and make sure that the USB Tiny ISP option is selected. After this, the USB Tiny ISP should be visible in the device manager in the Lip USB Win32 Devices section. Now you are ready to connect your board to the programmer device. But please turn on the printer's power if you are doing this while all the motors and fans are connected to the main board, because otherwise there is a chance you might be overloading your programmer or USB port. On the Ender 3, just plug the adapter into the 6-pin ICP connector located next to the display cable connector. And the flashing LED on the board should indicate that you connected the USB programmer correctly. Don't worry, if you still plug in the cable in the wrong direction, you will get an error while flashing and you can simply turn the adapter around by 180 degrees to fix this, so you will not break the board. Now open up the Arduino IDE again. I would start enabling Verbus output for uploading firmware in the File Preferences menu. Here we select Show Verbus output during upload and then hit OK. Next, you need to select the right programmer device. Depending on the programmer you have chosen, select the right item from Tools Programmer menu. There is an entry for the USB ASP and the USB Tiny ASP. Now select the Sanguino board from the Tools board menu. And also make sure you select the 80 mega 1284 16MHz option from the Tools processor menu. One last thing that you might need to install in the IDE is a library called UAGLib. Please go to the Sketch Include Library Manage Libraries menu. In the filter text box in the upper right corner of the dialog, enter UAGLib and hit enter. The library should show up at the end of the list. If there is an install button that you can click, please do so to make sure this library is installed before going to the next step. So up to this point, we did just preparations for actually uploading either a bootloader or the firmware to the mainboard. Let's look at how to use the bootloader method first and talk about the direct firmware upload in the troubleshooting section of the video. By the way, one tip about enabling features in Marlin before we start flashing any firmware. I would strongly recommend not to enable any additional features like auto bed leveling, anything before you haven't at least once flashed the firmware successfully to the printer with the default settings. You can imagine it's much harder to backtrack a problem when you don't know if the root cause is the feature that you just enabled or another feature that you enabled before. That said, open the tools menu again and then select the burn bootloader item. Now in the output section, you should see that the bootloader gets flashed and from now on, you will be able to use the USB cable to flash the firmware to your printer. So let's try that. Disconnect the programmer from your board and also from the USB port. And now connect your printer to the computer directly using the USB cable. Make sure you have selected the right COM port in the Arduino IDE. Finding the right port is easy. Check the list of COM ports once before and after you plug in the cable and select the COM port that has just appeared new in the list. You should be able to upload a new firmware now using the sketch upload menu item. So far about the happy flow, but sometimes you will run into issues. So let's dive into the troubleshooting section. The first problem that you might see is that during uploading of the firmware, you will get a not in sync error. There is several possible reasons for that. The first thing you want to do if you get the not in sync error is to make sure you have installed the Arduino drivers and the correct drivers for your programmer device if you're using one at this moment. So if you're in doubt, go back to the driver installation section of this video and reinstall all the drivers. If this doesn't help, also make sure you are connecting the programmer or the printer directly to one of the USB ports of your computer. Make sure you don't have a USB hub in between. The best thing is also really to disconnect any other devices except maybe mouse and keyboard if you are not on a laptop from your USB ports during flashing the firmware. 
And sometimes it's just as simple as you reboot your computer and it just works. Sometimes the USB cable itself is the source of problems. You can use another one and it could fix the issue. And in rare cases, you might want to try if your computer has several USB ports just to plug in the cable into another USB port. The second issue that you will run into at some point is either an error like text not fitting in area or sketch too big or firmware too big. This just means the features that you enabled in your Marlin firmware case, the resulting firmware file to get bigger and bigger. And once you've enabled enough features, it's getting too big for the flash memory. It won't fit in anymore. At this point, you have basically two possibilities to fix this issue. Either you manage to disable some unused features up to the point where the firmware gets so small that it fits again. Or if this is still not enough, you can flash the firmware without a bootloader and so use the whole flash memory for the firmware. And that also means you cannot use the USB cable anymore for flashing firmware. So let's list some of the biggest chunks of memory that we can get free with switches in the configuration file. I'm also going to put a link into the description of the video uh, that points to the Marlin firmware GitHub page where some users took the time to find out how much memory every single feature switch takes. Now, what are my usable switches that I disable when I run into memory issues? The first one is Arch support in configuration advanced.h, which gives us back three kilobytes. Uh, two other ones are string config h off and show boot screen in the configuration.h, which give us back half a kilobyte. And these three configuration switches most of the time help me to get around the sketch to big errors if I enable auto bad leveling or mesh bad leveling, for example. But if I would enable other features like linear advance to improve the print quality, I would probably have to disable another feature again. So this is a little tricky if you like to use all the advanced stuff that Marlin offers because the flash memory of these cheap printers is just so limited. And as a final resort, you can also disable the SD card feature, but this will take away the ability to use the SD card to print from the SD card. Instead, you can use Octoprint, for example, but this will need some additional hardware, either via the computer or a Raspberry Pi to control what's going on on your printer. Now, let's assume that you still have not enough flash memory and you don't want to disable a specific feature like the SD card. As I've said in the beginning, you can also try to flash the firmware without a bootloader and so gain a few kilobytes because you are going to use all the flash memory available. To do that, connect your programmer to your computer and to the ICP port of your printer, as already explained, and in the Arduino IDE, instead of using sketch upload, you will use the upload using programmer item. The last issue I would like to talk about is the bad probing area problem. If you decide to put a bad leveling probe on your printer, you might run into an error like probe bad position is outside the probe region. I've done a whole video to explain how to fix this error. I've linked it up here for you so you can easily follow the necessary steps. So that's it basically. If you think this video was helpful, like and subscribe. And if you really want to support me creating this content for you, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. It's linked in the description. See you next time. Have fun printing.